Hi, my name is Shanique, and this is the talk of the day with Detroit Bay. Boom. Got All it. right, so we here with Sleek by Shanique, yes. and and I want to say that uh, you know this woman is very skilled. She is always has the chair turning. Just over 12k followers on Instagram. Um, I see a lot of her clientele have the shorter look like pixie cut a lot of cut and curls but talk about your expertise and your background like kind of give us a little backstory on how you got here first of all let's talk about location we're here in gross point inside my salon suite which is at 16824 kerchival avenue and your suite number 207 okay and how long have you been here march made five years okay and um prior to being here what was your backstory like you were a previous salon owner or you worked on a salon floor so i left beauty school in 2013 okay yeah 2013 2012 and i got a call from a salon owner in east point stating that she was looking for someone who could be trained to do short hair okay so i was already into short hair because in beauty school i had two short hair um instructors yeah so it was like perfect and i was set to take my state board test in like a week oh wow. so when she called me it was just perfect timing okay and i went to take my state board test call her she brought me in and had me do a demonstration on two models and I started that next week. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was uh, that was very timely. Yep. yep. And so ever since then, you kind of like been very, not limited, but focused on the short hair. But you obviously do other things as your cosmetologist. So talk about some of the other services you offer. So a few other services that I offer is um, I specialize in healthy hair with long hair also, and cuts and color a lot of color mm -hmm. yeah so with coloring do you have a preference of brand and if so um have you ever is that because you've worked with a particular company and they've sponsored you like how did you develop like your preference when it comes to color when it comes to color i like to look for brands that the customers can't purchase themselves mm -hmm. so i like to keep it professional um I like a lot of like source call reckon a lot of those lines okay a lot of the lines that i was familiar with in beauty school also mm. okay yep and just kind of branching out trying different things and going on youtube and instagram and just seeing a lot of videos and what other stylists use okay but mainly i like to invest my money in a color line that clients can't go and purchase that day every day you know beauty supply makes sense yeah and so uh are there any um products outside of color that you kind of cling to that um are more quality for you that you kind of like suggest to your clients for aftercare or maintenance um yep a lot of products that is good for our hair okay. what are some of those lines that you like um i love nairobi okay they have a really popular wrap lotion that everybody loves to use mm -hmm. also i love a company called naked oh okay yep naked is really good for our hair what else heard of that one. yep um and design essential yeah okay i've heard about a lot cut about color whether if it's long hair short hair but of course mainly short yes but i do have a lot of clients that have um grown their short hair out to like bob length okay. or shoulder length hair and they still wear a lot of highlights low lights so cutting and coloring is me every day yep. yes yep and you do obviously the wraps and the press and curls yep um so since you've been here what changes have you implemented into your brand or what thing is things would you like to add to what you do so being here kind of made me develop a program for myself okay because we do have limited space in here right so to kind of um be able to juggle your clients yes as well as not 
get rid of them so fast but just have them in a good rotation where i can book clients every hour yes and have them out in two to two and a half hours depending on if they're getting chemical services if they getting you know any other extra service that might require more time right but being here definitely made me get a get little that, bit more structure yeah structure with timing mm -hmm. yeah and i know a lot of people don't like to feel rushed because this is their time when they get down sit down get they self pampered this is their time it might be off day but still as a stylist we still have to you know work and get clients in and out so i just developed a time for myself a nice schedule yeah yeah and uh you like you said as far as the schedule you are very consistent with getting out basically early every day like before late in the evening pretty much throughout the week um and uh i think that's very commendable because obviously you are a woman you have a family yeah and like that you have to dedicate time to that so talk about like that quote-unquote work-life balance like um how did you get to that point because I can't assume, but sometimes I would assume that a stylist doesn't always start there. Like, you kind of like work because you want to build a clientele, you want to build some notoriety within the community. So, how did you get there and how did you maintain that? I definitely had to get it mastered because, like you said in the beginning, it wasn't. You, you start out pretty much doing things that you don't want to do, which is what? Working day to night. <laughs> right. And I was like, this can't be life <laughs> yeah. so I just had to like sit down and just regroup and figure out what works for me mm -hmm. you know I get up early yes so I get up early start my day and just being consistent how do you do your own personal time like is that a thing like you're a parent like how do you even dedicate me time within that whole you know cycle I always tell my clients that my personal time is in the morning because okay. my husband go to work early okay and then my daughter is still asleep so I create my own time in the morning I still have time to like throw a load of clothes in feed the dog you know stuff like that or just sit down for myself because I like to do yoni steam stuff like that yeah. so I'll do that just in my route of getting ready for work okay yep so it's almost like the calm before the storm. Yep. <laughs> yep. Or if my husband is off of work, yeah. then that means nobody has to be woken up at home and not really just have my time. I might leave out early for work, yeah. go to Kroger, stop at Starbucks. Like Make that's, as much use of your time yeah. as possible. <laughs> and that's my me time. But on <laughs> Sundays or even Mondays, because I still have three days off. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Every week. Yes. So that's my personal time. That's my time to sit down and get a manicure, pedicure, or if I want to fix my own hair. Yes. Or just to even regroup and just sit down and just meditate and be quiet. Yes. So those that's my time. Yeah. And then Wednesday through Saturday is dedicated to my clients. And mm -hmm. then after work, it's family at home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good system there. So where it just become an everyday pattern. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's very like pertinent to develop a pattern in a system, but also like even within the system it doesn't have to be mundane. So it seems like you have it worked out to where it works for you, but it's not just like you get overwhelmed and just tired of the same regimen. Right. <laughs> because not every day is the same. So mm -hmm. it'll be days where it'll switch up where, you know, I might have a longer day where I'm accommodating a client to come you know later than normal or something like that so exactly every day is interesting i'm i'm enjoying it mm -hmm. definitely <laughs> well that's good to hear so you have how many years of experience as a cosmetologist as a cosmetologist i have oh seven years okay and before you got in the field what was your background like more corporate <laughs> so i went to votech for um, CNA. Okay. <laughs> so I actually worked in two nursing homes. All right. But it just it wasn't it for wasn't. me. It was it was like I think I was taking that too serious and too personal where I was like attached to the patients. Yeah. You know, just like emotional. You get there and you like, oh, what happened to Miss So and So? Like, oh, she passed away last night. And then you got to just move on. I but I always did hair on the side. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, like, no, that's just from, you know, kind of like having a knack for doing hair and just kind of like having friends and family that you did their hair before yeah. you, okay. Because no. even now, I think just the bottom line is probably just taking care of people because even now being a stylist, you still taking care of people needs. Yeah. So that's just probably my whole background. Yeah, I think it's for people good. Yeah, I think that background kind of like is fitting because, like you said, the taking care side. You know about the talking, talking to people piece, and just the the hospitality side of things. Yeah. So, um, how would you compare just that level of expertise and experience to being a hairstylist, like, um, or more so the the corporate side? Like, were there any things that you just totally didn't agree with uh, from working in the corporate industry to being like entrepreneur, and like, and comparatively, why you prefer being an entrepreneur? Um, being my own boss. Mm -hmm. That was important to me. Um, where I can just create my own schedule yeah. and work at my own pace right not so much as like oh well you work i'm gonna just say monday through friday mm -hmm. i was like um i need mondays off yeah so just that whole push of just working for myself that motivated me every day where i can create my own schedule yes yeah. yes um because it can get kind of frustrating like you may have something planned or you may want to plan something and you got to do the whole request thing and yeah <laughs> i was like i don't like i don't like that yes so uh any manual labor job can be kind of obviously taxing on the body you have seven years behind the chair what do you see yourself moving forward from here moving forward from here i see myself um being an educator okay yeah is that anything that you've had any previous experience in, like the platform artists or anything like that at some of the conventions, like Bronner Brothers or anything like that? Yep, I had one. Um, it was two two years ago. Okay. Yeah, that was really like my first experience in instructing. Oh, I'm sure that yeah. had to be exciting. It was very exciting, <laughs> yep. Um, so I would like to further, you know, get my education in probably go back for my instructor's license oh okay yeah. is that like more of a, a a long process yeah it can be oh yeah and it can be time consuming as well okay yeah. well at least you're already in the field and you can still work and do things to kind of like maximize Supplement your time forward. exactly yeah <laughs> with going and stepping into that box like are there any like because i notice a lot of people are like sponsored by like you said design essentials and things like that like would you want to be like sponsored by a particular brand or anything definitely mm -hmm. yep if i had the opportunity yep i would okay yeah detroit used to be known as like the hair capital and i guess it pretty much still has that a, some is real still reminiscent of that to some people but um like we used to be really heavy on a lot of hair shows and things like that like have like what makes you or what do you think made that era kind of die down would you think that like social media and a lot of like other mediums kind of like played into that being less of an attraction for people I think people stopped investing. Okay. Yeah, I think people kind of got away from investing and furthering their education when it comes to um, being a stylist and people just started just doing hair to where everybody just kind of like drifted away from what we actually stand for. Yes. And I think that was like the main thing. Um, all the good old stylists is like either retired or doing something else and I just think people got away from that I meet so many stylists who don't invest yeah. who don't take um, like updated classes to see what the new trend is or you know they just don't want to invest the money they've been standing behind the chair making money for so long but they don't want to take that money and put it into something else yeah yeah because i think there's a benefit in doing that outside of just being more equipped is with your expertise you actually kind of like can gain more earning potential and you know reach a more broad audience have you ever done any like one-on-one classes or is that something that you would like to do yes 
okay it's coming really soon sweet sweet yeah. and so like um getting towards wrapping up talk about your social media and where people can find your work um you can find me on instagram or facebook at sleep by shanique mm -hmm. um i show all of my work there i don't use a website because a lot of people always ask me about a booking site and i think the booking sites bring you away from clients and getting to know people when you send people to those sites it can be kind of confusing yeah. it's almost like oh i don't want to discuss nothing with you just go to my site i like to interact with my clients i like yeah. to get to know them see exactly. what they like how they like their hair yes. it's not always about the money i rather my clients be satisfied with their hair or their service period that's a fact so i haven't gotten to the whole booking site yeah and i think that like you going back to what you said about being confusing like someone may think that they should book for something and they book the wrong thing yeah and then you got your schedule kind of blocked up for yep. that day so i think that's totally valid so outside of that if someone wanted to reach you to maybe set up a consultation or do scheduling i know at the time you were kind of like not taking new clients because you get so jammed still not I, okay okay well yeah. you can look from afar yeah. and so much my, my but i'm gonna start taking new clients um hopefully once i open my salon next month awesome yep. so let's <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, let's talk about that. So the the salon is gonna be called Sleep by Shanique still? Yeah, Sleep oh. by Shanique, but the salon. Yeah. Yep, and it is coming next month. Wow. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. I know that is man, that's yeah. such so that's exciting. Such a proud moment. Yep. It's like to work to that status and yep. to just really be able to just expand what you do in your craft and be able to just reach out and do that so i commend you Thank what you. what location are we talking so i can't give much detail because yeah. it is kind of like a surprise okay but it's not far from here <laughs> That's yeah. what's up. Look, my clients, I love my clients, right? Yeah. And they've been rooting for me the entire time. Mm -hmm. So I kind of created like a surprise grand opening okay. for them. Almost yeah. like a party. Yeah. So Dude. it's not just for me because my client the other day was like, what do we bring? I'm like, I don't know. This for y'all. Like, I feel like I'm giving this back to my ladies. Yeah. So it's a surprise for them. They don't even have no idea of like location, what it looks like nothing oh man nothing. that's gonna be exciting an exciting rollout yeah um so okay what made you want to venture into having your own individual space from transitioning away from a salon suite growth yeah yeah me turning down clients and never uh being able to like add new clients to my schedule because i don't have a space i think where i'm at now i have De definitely like maximize this space and i have used every inch of it yes but i can't get no further right so um it was just kind of a push for me to get my own place <laughs> for sure <laughs> yes so once again congratulations if you want to be up to date on what Shanique is doing. You can follow her at on Instagram at Sleek by Shanique, yep. and you know just be on the lookout for all updates as it relates to Sleek by Shanique the yep. salon and the grand <laughs> opening. And it will be full details as to when I will start back taking new clients. Awesome. Okay, so I want to really expend my appreciation for you taking the time out and being flexible and all that behind the scenes yeah. stuff. And uh, this is the talk of the day with Detroit Babe signing out.